This learning video will focus on optimizable objects for the PT optimization feature in RAM Concept. When we refer to optimizable objects, we mean that the program can automatically adjust the property values associated with those objects as it attempts to find the most economical solution. The optimizable objects in RAM Concept are banded tenon polylines, distributed tenon quadrilaterals, and profile polylines. Note that all of these objects are associated with the tenon parameter layer and not the manual tenon layer. One important point to remember is that manual tenons are not optimized by the program. Manual tenons can be modeled and will be considered in the calculations completed by the optimizer. However, the number of strands per tenon associated with those tenons will not be changed during the process. Because of this, you will most often work with generated tenons and the tenon parameter layer and not manual tenons when using the optimizer. One side note on tenon parameters. In previous versions, jacks could only be modeled at the ends of manual tenons. In version 6.5, we added jack regions, which can be used to generate jacks at the end of generated tenons. To do this, model a jack region and when the tenons are generated the program will automatically detect generated tendon ends within this region and add a jack at the ends of those tenons. Let's focus on each optimizable object separately and review the inputs that are required to prepare them for optimization. We will start with band tendon polylines. Banded tenon polylines can be optimized by selecting one or more existing polylines and editing their properties. To make them optimizable, click on the Optimization tab and check the Optimize box. Then set a range of minimum and maximum values and an increment to be explored during the optimization. Typically, you will set the minimum value based on code minimum pre-compression requirements and the maximum value will be based on practical maximum pre-compression limits. Note that you can work with either strands or fours for the tenon specification type, and you can even switch between the two as needed over the course of the project. For this model, I will use a minimum number of 16 strands and a maximum number of 40 strands for the banded tenons on the interior spans. And for the banded tenons on the exterior spans, I will use a minimum number of 8 strands and a maximum number of 20 strands. Often an efficient design requires added tenons and end spans that are approximately the same length or larger than interior spans. The optimizer can automatically calculate the additional tenons in these spans for the most economical design. To do this, you can split the tenons at the end span. First, select the tenons to be split, depress the split banded tenon polyline tool, and then cut a line where the tenons are to be split. Now that the tenon is split into three segments, the optimizer will optimize each segment separately and each may be optimized with a different tenon quantity. Now let's look at distributed tenon quadrilaterals. Distributed tenon quadrilaterals are prepared for optimization very similar to banded tenon polylines. Select one or more existing quadrilaterals and edit their properties. Click on the optimization tab and check the optimize box. Then set a range of minimum and maximum values and an increment to be explored during the optimization. Again, the minimum and maximum values can be based on code or practical pre-compression limits. As with banded tenon polylines, you can work with either effective forces or strands for the tenon speci specification type. For this model, I will select forces. For optimization properties, I will use a minimum value of 12 kips per foot for the minimum effective force. 20 kips per foot for the maximum effective force, and I will use an increment of 0.5 kips per foot. 
even though I have mostly worked with whole numbers here, you should note that you can work with decimals as needed. Similar to band attendance, distributed attendance can be added in M bays or heavily loaded areas to produce an efficient design. To do this, add an overlapping quadrilateral to the area in question. When setting the optimization properties, use a minimum effective force of zero. By using this value, the optimizer will consider solutions without the added tenants when searching for the most economical design. Now let's turn our attention to profile polylines. In RAM concept, profile polylines control the elevation of the tenon objects that cross them. In most models, all span polylines, or low points, will be defined so that they are optimized. And the support polylines, or high points, will be kept at the highest possible elevation and will not be optimized. An exception may be the high point of a cantilever support, which is often lowered so that the cantilever is not overbalanced. Similar to the tenon objects, polylines are prepared for optimization by selecting one or more existing polylines, then edit their properties, click on the optimization tab, and check the optimize box. You will set a range of minimum and maximum elevations in an increment that will be explored by the optimizer. The elevation values correspond to the elevation reference that's set in the general tab. So if bottom cover is used for the elevation reference, the minimum and maximum elevations will be measured from the bottom of the slab. Typically, the minimum value will be based on minimum cover requirements. When defining the maximum value, we recommend using a wide range to ensure that the optimal solution is included in the many possible solutions that are searched during the optimization. The increment value can be set to standard support share increments, or you can also use something larger if you want less variation. For this model, an 8-inch slab, I will use a full range of elevations and the half-inch increment for the span polylines that are shown here. I will also optimize the polyline over the cantilever supports and I will use a range between 1 and 4 inches with the same half inch increment. All other support polylines will be defined with the optimize box unchecked so that they are not optimized by the program. When modeling the polylines, you may define the polyline so that it extends across several bays with identical spans. When this is done, one elevation is optimized for the entire polyline, and this may prevent the optimizer from finding the most economical design. When the span lengths are different between adjacent spans or there are spans with different loading, you may want to split the polyline so that a different elevation is optimized for each span. This can be done using the Split Profile Polyline tool. I will demonstrate this tool now. First, select all of the polylines in the model, depress the tool, and then draw a line on screen to split the polylines in each bay. Eliminating profile polylines that you do not need is a good idea since it can reduce the number of optimizable objects and improve performance. There is a new Adjust Profile Polylines tool on the tenant parameters layer that can help manipulate the polylines and prepare them for optimization. This tool can be accessed from the tool buttons on the right hand side of the screen or from the tools pull down menu at the top of the program window. This tool can automatically extend or trim profile polylines to the slab edge, delete short polylines, or connect nearby endpoints and merge them into a single polyline. These can all be important for a successful optimization. The tool is used by selecting all of the polylines in the model, depressing the tool, selecting the profile type, span, or support, 
reviewing the tolerance settings and then clicking OK. Note that all of the span polylines here have been snapped exactly to the slab edge. I will repeat the process for the support profile polylines. Note that the polylines in this model were uniform and did not illustrate other modeling issues like short polylines and snap issues with adjacent polyline ends that can also be corrected using this tool.